Anyway, let's move on. Dino the close in boxing. And I'm looking forward to this one because Anthony Joshua got a win that really nobody really cared about <laughs> because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't flashy. It was like, oh, wow, Joshua won. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It, matter of fact, if you reflect back years ago, it'd be like, oh, Anthony Joshua, he fighting. When is that fight coming on, man? I got to see Anthony Joshua. I may be from America, but at 5 o'clock Eastern time, all right, cool. I'm going to tune in. Now it's like, uh, for Jermaine Johnson, okay, you know. Yo, did you see that basketball game, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody really is in tune. But anyway, Eddie Hearn says that Anthony Joshua needs another tuna fight in July before fighting Ferry or Wilder after defeating Jermaine Johnson. Should Joshua prefer to fight Wilder or Ferry in early 2024? Do you know? Let me yawn on that one real quick. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he gets a tune-up fight or not. Wow. Fury or Wilder is knocking AJ spark out. It doesn't matter, in my opinion. I've seen enough of AJ. We've seen the Ruiz fight. And we even seen the Ruiz 2 fight, where he really was just sticking and moving. And that's because Ruiz was eating cake. He wasn't even he wasn't even steak. He was eating cake. <laughs> he couldn't keep up with him. So, so, boy, we so, dope, boy. <laughs> yeah, you look, you look at that before he cut off all that weight. So you look at the Ruiz 1-2 fight. I wasn't impressed. Then you look at... Uh, who did he, he had a uh, tune-up fight against uh, Pulev, right? Pulev wasn't that the guy's name. He had mm -hmm. that. He had that fight against him, and then he went and fought Usyk. Usyk's coming up, but everyone knows Usyk's a very technical and skilled fighter. And coming into the matchup, I was like, I think Usyk's gonna beat him, and he handily beat him the first time. Second time was a little bit closer, but I still thought Usyk won by like two rounds. I gave that to Usyk, and we've seen it from Joshua. How much more do we have to see, to be honest, to know what kind of fighter he is or isn't? He's right. The dude was talking about retiring if he lost, for crying out loud. <laughs> he was talking about retiring. And now, now he's all good, and he got his win, so he's not retiring. But who, who are you going to fight as a tune-up fight now? Who, 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 what, uh, what other tune-up fight do you need before you fight Fury and Wilder? You know, Wilder just went one round, <laughs> two rounds against Hellenius. Fury went uh, 10 against Chisora. So they both, but that was a little while ago. That was, this is a few months, this is months ago now. We we haven't seen them in the ring for months. AJ's got, if anything, AJ's the least ring rush because he was just in there. And he went the distance. So in reality, how much more do we really need to see from AJ instead of booking either the Fury or the Wilder fight this summer? Now to answer the question, I think if I'm AJ, I think you go fight Fury. Because Fury can offer something right now. Fury can offer the belt. He can offer a payday. Too, and he could offer a payday in Britain, your your home, where you guys are both from. So you can do the Battle of Britain. You can do this big thing at Wembley or this big thing at Tottenham Stadium. You could do a massive event there, sell out crowds. Do it in Manchester. Do it in Fury's backyard. You know, you could do a massive fight in the UK. So if I'm AJ, I want to fight Fury for those reasons. However, I just don't think he's gonna win. I don't see how he beats Fury, and I don't see how he beats Wilder. I think both of them finish him. It's, I don't think either of those fights go to a decision. I think they both knock him out. And I, after that, I I feel like that's it for him. Because, I mean, unless he wants to go and fight Wilder after. But like I said, Wilder will just knock him out. <laughs> Wilder's going to find that punch in round seven or eight when AJ's going on his bicycle, and then that's it. So if I'm AJ, I go do your tune-up fight, I guess. Then go fight Fury. Do it for uh, do it for the UK. Do it for the payday. Do it for the massive revenue and event you're going to put on for the people. Because let's be real here, we want to see Fury Usyk. We do. It's such a heartbreaker about what happened. But this isn't a bad compensation. Fury Josh was not a bad compensation. Just like if it would happen, Wilder Usyk would also not be a bad compensation. I don't think it's going to happen because I saw something that Usyk's going to have to do and fight a mandatory now. So I'm not too thrilled about that. But, however, if we can get Usyk Wilder at the end of the year, that's fine by me. I would like that. And I would like AJ Fury at the end of the year. But it's looking like it's going to be a relatively slower summer in boxing because, you know, we got uh, Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia coming up a couple weeks. Let's go. And then we got uh, Haney and Loma. It's a good fight. We got Josh Taylor, Teofimo Lopez, another good fight. And yeah. we allegedly – Allegedly, have Bud Crawford, Errol Spence lined up for June. Allegedly, 
We're going to see what happens with that. Keep the fingers crossed because we don't know yet. We're going back to the question. If I'm AJ, I'm going with the Fury fight. I mean, look, man, I think there's two ways in alternative angles for me to answer this question. Obviously, I can answer the question the way how the question is presented. Yeah, I say fight Tyson Fury in your best interest. Um, if you're talking about a fan perspective, I still want to see that Wilder fight. And for a different reason than what I want to see it before because, right? Back then, in 2017, I want to see the Wilder and Joshua fight because I want to see who was the best at the time. A lot of people, including myself, thought that Anthony Joshua and Wilder was the best. This was before Fury came back into the picture. So that's why I want to see that fight then. Now, I want to see that fight because I want to see Anthony Joshua get sent home to the gods. Okay? Because Deontay Wilder will knock him out. And in my mind, I'm saying, would it be a knockout like the Ortiz where... It's a battle, and they going back and forth, and Joshua is boxing a little bit more. You see him trying to box a lot more than power shots these days, and Wilder just catches him late, or is it going to be like a Dominique Brazil early? You know, um, we just get in our seats, and boom, he's out cold. You know, I don't know if I want to disrespect Anthony Joshua to that level of degree, but I do know eventually that right hand is coming. And Pillsbury Dope Boy looking like bodybuilder, but inside, really, Pillsbury Doughboy is going to get clapped, to be honest with you. And I think when you talk about Joshua, I don't know what happened. At one point, I thought Joshua was a, was a dude. You know, 2017 was knocking guys out. He was a finisher. A lot of people underrated that aspect about Joshua, his finishing. With that right hand, just like Wilder, maybe not as powerful, but he was knocking Anthony, not Anthony, Alexander Povekin out with it. He knocked out Dominique Brazil. He knocked out Dillian White with the uppercut. You know, he Good throws show. a lot of uppercuts. That's his number one dish. You know, yes, exactly. He knocked out a lot of guys, you know, and I'm saying to myself, where has that guy went? And ever since he lost to Ruiz in Madison Square Garden, ever since he came to American soil, whatever happened, it just got zapped and it never came back with him overseas. Okay, honestly, and um, he also gave him a beat down. Let's not forget, he knocked him he down did. like three times. He gave he him did, a smackdown. Is it was something about Ruiz and how he got back up? He literally stole Anthony Joshua's soul because let's not forget, Anthony Joshua knocked Ruiz down mm -hmm, first. in the early rounds, and when he got back up, I don't know if he looked in the face of debt, but um. Whatever finisher, you know, killer instinct he had at that time was gone. And it never came back. And then he loses the two fights to Usyk. I'm skipping over some fights. I know I skipped the Pulev fight. But um, he knocked him out. But, you know, fast forward to the Usyk fights. You know, me personally, when you compare the last Usyk fight to this fight, I thought he looked better in the second Usyk fight than this fight against Jermaine Johnson. And he looked timid in this fight. I understand he was keeping him at a distance with the stick and jab. He was throwing some uppercuts and all that. Uh, but, yes, he won the fight, you know, clearly, obviously. Won every single round, you could argue. But he never really landed anything of substance where I thought he was going to pack him up. And I find this stat to be very interesting. Um, the most punches landed by Joshua was 16 out of 39 attempted in round 10. And luckily for Joshua, Franklin landed a total of 58 punches Compared to Joshua's 117 punches. So he was not really aggressive. I thought when he was trained by Robert Garcia for that one fight with Usyk, he looked better. And um, I believe Derek James is his trainer now. That's the same trainer who trains Al Spence and Jamal Charlo. I understand he's decorated, but that doesn't mean every trainer is built for every fighter. I thought Robert Garcia, because he's more of a power guy, that um he worked better with him. But I think something was said. I think Robert Garcia came out and talked about how just calling out the hypocrisy he saw in the camp of Anthony Joshua said that the camp need to tighten up a little bit and he needs to be held accountable. I guess that rubbed Joshua off the wrong way. And um, I guess that's why he got kicked to the curb and why he settled for um, not settled, but think he upgraded for Derrick James. But in this fight, it didn't really look like 
that was going to be a, a very good pairing to me. But it's one fight. Obviously, it's a new trainer. You have to continue to fight to get that chemistry. But I'm just going off of the two fights I saw with Robert Garcia as his trainer against Usyk and Derek James in this Jermaine Johnson fight. You know, um, if I saw the Joshua in that Usyk fight too, then I, that's a respectable Joshua. Maybe not the knockout guy and the guy that could beat Wilder or Fury, but it's a respectable Joshua where you're like, all right, this cat could possibly outbox you. Or you may outbox him, but he can stand on his toes and not get knocked out. But in this one, this version of Joshua, honestly, needs to retire with all due respect. You know, because I don't think his mind is here. I think his confidence is gone. When you're going up against Fury, you're going to need confidence. Fury is a good fighter. A lot of people say he's the best. I think Usyk, I think it's, it depends on a matchup because I think Usyk, and I said it before, I'm not shy to say it, I think Usyk beats Fury. I always thought that because of how much he throws. Like, he would have to knock out Usyk in order to beat Usyk. He's not going to out-throw Usyk because Usyk would throw about 100 per round, okay? He's going to out-jab you. He's going to do a lot of stuff offensively to outscore you. And I think he beats him, but I think Wilder beats Usyk. And, of course, we know Fury beats Wilder. So I think it's that type of thing. And Anthony Joshua just loses to all of them. But the confidence needs to come back. And I don't think in boxing, based off previous fights that I've seen with fighters where they hit the ground for the first time, they never get that dog back. And I think Eddie Hearn is going to have to learn that he cannot find that dog back. You cannot simulate that dog back that's the thing that you have and if you had it you can't get it back and i don't think anthony joshua was getting that back so if that opportunity of fury presents itself next your might as well go and get that paycheck because if he loses and this is my last point then i'll pass it back to you if he loses to the next potential tune-up then now he's definitely done and now there's no more payday get the payday now you know, I agree with that, and especially what you said about having that dog in you. That was a very good point because that has to come from within, you know. And if you don't have that in there in yourself, and it could be for anything. It could be for whatever sport you play. It could be whatever profession you want to get into. It could be with whatever it is in life even. Yeah. If you have to be a you know, protector, uh, a provider, if you have to be, you know, whatever it is. You know, if you want to, you want to be the best, you know, car mechanic, you want to be the best doctor. You want to be known like, hey, go to this dude if you want your car fixed. Hey, go to this doctor if you want to be well taken care of. You have to have that motivation from inside you to be, you know what? I want to be the best at what I do. And if you don't have that, especially in a profession like boxing, where if you are, you cannot go out there and play it. You know, you cannot go do that. And, you know, when I go to the boxing gym and stuff, you, know, you get some people, they'll come in and you, you won't see them really much anymore afterwards because, you know what, maybe they just don't have it in them. It's, it's not one of those things where you can go in there and be like, oh, I want to do it. Yeah, it'll be something cool to do on the side. Like, no, because you're getting hit in the face. How many times my nose has been busted open because I, I dropped my hands a little bit and I got hit in the face? Like, you have to want it and you have to be all in for it. So if you don't have that all in mentality, like look at what Tom Brady said last year when he retired the first time. He's like, football, you got to be all in. I was about, I'm still all in for now. It's like just that alone. It's like you could already tell you kind of, knew this was going to be his last year playing. So if Joshua doesn't have that mentality, I feel like I have to concur, and he should retire if he's not thinking like that. But I also, on the flip side, also don't think Joshua's really had much of that mentality his whole career. Look at what he said to Tyson Fury when Fury was coming back up. He said, oh, sign with my team. We'll make you such a global superstar. You're going to be well-known everywhere. You're going to be a superstar. Like, I have a six-pack. I'm well-known. And Fury was like, nah, dude, I, I want to fight. Because I don't care about having, you know, 11 million Instagram followers. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like Joshua always kind of more cared so about the fame and what came with being a world champion boxer than actually boxing himself. Because now the heavyweight division's loaded again. It's the most loaded it's been in a, such a long time. And, you know, now if you really don't have that dog mentality, are you really going to be able to beat Fury, Wilder? You lost twice to Usyk already. And now we've always said Wilder and Fury are going to knock AJ out. And that goes back to the whole trainer thing. Sugar Hill Stewart's a great trainer for Tyson Fury because Ben Davison wanted Fury to win on points. Fine. But then when you fight someone like Wilder, you, it's harder to beat Wilder on points. You got to get him out of there because he, or or he's going to get you out of there. Yeah. So <laughs> you look in that perspective, 
AJ's got a tough road ahead, you know, because it's not getting any easier. You know, because at some point, you know, you're not going to get the third Usyk fight. And I know the second fight was a split decision, but you lost that pretty handily. I don't know how the one judge gave it to him. I thought he lost by like two, three rounds. So I look at that aspect and I'm like, well, there's no really path there for Usyk. He kind of has to go that route with Fury or Wilder. And right now, Fury can at least offer something in terms of a fighting for a belt. And if you really want to fight for a belt, you're going to have to fight Fury. And that's no easy fight for anybody. Because in my opinion, you look at Tyson Fury, you look at his skill set, you look at the way he moves, his size, his weight. How he can knock you out. He can beat you on points. He can outbox you. He can do all those things. That is such a complete heavyweight, especially being 6'9", 275. And the way he moves and slips punches, it's like, how does a guy this big slip like that? How does he And he like uses... That? He uses his physical attributes more than Anthony Joshua does. Absolutely. And jo Joshua's only like three inches shorter than him. Yeah. So That's it's what like I... Joshua, Joshua's no slouch. He's not a small guy. He's a big dude too. But I just don't I... think he knows how to use – I don't, yeah. I just, from what I see with AJ, it's like, like, do you know how to use your body and use your size? You know? Like to me, he sometimes he just – he's the way he is in his stance, I'm like, he just looks like he's just a big punching bag. Like he's not if he's not sticking and moving, he's just kind of standing there getting hit. So, yeah. you know, and then going to the the first Ruiz fight, you know, he spit the bit. People don't like to look at that, but there was I think it was round six or seven, whatever it was when Ruiz knocked him out or finished him. Like Josh was getting up, he spit the bit. If you spit the bit, that that means you're out. You got nothing. You know, that's like man, I can't I can't beat this dude. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like that's it. That's he stood in the corner, waited. Ref gave him every chance. That was it. You knew he was out. So it's like ever since that first Ruiz fight, man, it's it's been different for AJ. You know, that that really was his turning point because he hasn't since then he hasn't handled adversity very well, you know? And I think when you talk about Anthony Joshua, I think he's a humble individual. You know, I watch a lot of interviews. He seems like a humble cat. He seems like a guy who, you know, is not Hollywood. You know, if you want to do an interview, he'll give you an interview. So I'm not trying to paint him in a negative way on the media. But at the same time, that dog is needed in the ring. You have to learn how to switch things off and on, right? Like, obviously, when I get on the air, I I'm pretty the same off the air when talking about sports. You know, I'm, I'm excited to talk about sports. You feel the passion when I yeah. talk about sports. But there's another, another lil that has to get turned on when I'm on the air. You know, whereas I can do certain things off the air that I can't do on the air or vice versa. In the ring, you have to learn how to turn that dog on and still be that humble guy that could be friendly amongst these fighters outside of the ring. You don't always have to fake a beef, right? But at the same time, I don't think that dog is there. Eddie Hearn can't want it for you. I feel like a lot of the times I'm hearing and seeing Eddie Hearn without seeing him. Like I'm hearing his voice. And AJ, you know, with all the pressure, he wants Anthony Joshua to be the best, obviously, for ulterior reasons, money and all that. But he can't want it for you. You have to want it for yourself. You have to want the legacy that you got in this game to achieve. And right now, I'm not seeing it at all. You know, you talked about various examples. Um, How about the example where he gave Ruiz the belt to hold leading up to that first fight? You know, in the press conference, he let him hold the belt. That's not a warrior mode right there. He went into that fight not in warrior mode, and that's what cost him. And ever since then, he's been on the, the decline. And like I said, take the payday if it's offered to you. Me personally, and this is my last point, I don't think that team has nothing or want nothing to do with Deontay Wilder. That was clear to me back in 2017. It never have been. Where they offered him 50 million, they said, You know what? Bring me 50 million. Now, I don't know if they believe that Wilder had that type of money to offer. I don't know if Wilder went and robbed the bank, or maybe he's just good with his business outside of boxing. But he bought to the table that 50 million and it was Duck Duck Goose. So if they didn't want it then in their primes, yes, it will be an easier fight to make because AJ is not as you know at the top. Wilder still is, he's also in a developmental stage too. We have to realize, and that's why I would love to see this fight more, because we are still building back Wilder with Malik Scott and learning, you know, new techniques to add on to his toolbox along with the power. So he, in his own right, 
is in a rebuilding stage, right? He fought his sparring partner, knocked him out. It was a tune-up fight to build you back up too. So we are building both of these fighters back up. They're in the same boat. They should be the ones that fight. But I don't think Joshua's team wants to make that fight because of the risk and the power of Deontay Wilder. You know what? I do agree with that. I they they never wanted the Wilder fight when Wilder held the WBC belt to make AJ unified, and they they haven't wanted him then. They're not going to want him now, especially when AJ, as Eddie Hearn says, is at like the bottom right now. They got to build him back up. Like, oh, he needs two or three tune up fights. That's how you know he's getting built back up, and he doesn't want nothing to do with Wilder. They want nothing. Excuse me. They want nothing to do with each other. Or I would say AJ doesn't want anything to do with Wilder. Wilder in my opinion, has wanted to fight AJ. He, I'm pretty sure Wilder even said, I'll go fight in Britain. I don't care. Yeah, he did. So that was back then. And, you know, I think Wilder, maybe, I don't know who he fights over the summer if it's not Usyk. Maybe Ruiz. I don't know. It'd be pretty interesting. But, you know, we'll see what happens with it. I think that uh, AJ has also, in terms of him being classy or whatnot, I would say there have been times when he, like after the fight, would go out and, uh, go, take the mic from Usyk, and he and he pushed the guy Franklin, and he, you know, was like, what's going on there, you know? So I don't really know about that, but a lot of it is, you know, AJ's a little bit of a toss up. So yeah, he's a, he's unraveling, y'all. And like I said, maybe retirement is calling him before Fury does and Wilder does, but who who knows? Money's there. Money will always get people to do anything, right? So we we'll have to see what money brings in. Anthony Joshua, Tyson Ferry, and Deontay Wilder's career for that matter. But ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up another episode of 99 Pod. Once again, like, subscribe to the channel to get the notifications. We're going to have more content coming your way. Dino, it was a pleasure as always. And as always, I'm looking forward to the next one. Appreciate you, big dog. Thank you for having me. This is a great show. Hopefully we delivered some good content for you guys. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Playoffs right around the corner. Garcia Davis right around the corner. We're going to have some content for you. A lot of content. Peace out. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right. Slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Or leave a question. Something you may want to answer. Something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question. 